so it's Thursday, it's the week after I just got back from CES, and we're finally getting back to work on Project Game Room. Um, it's a bit of a mess right now because stuff's just been going in here, but it's an office, so we have to be able to do work and uh, stuff like that. So, got the old carpet picked up, and I think me and Chris are gonna. Apparently there are like instructions for this carpet, you have to put down stuff to make sure it doesn't slide. So me and Chris, who you've probably seen in some of the other time lapses and stuff like that, are gonna put down the new carpet. So the carpet we went with is made by this company called Floor. They make these modular tiles that you can arrange in a lot of different fashions. They come in different shapes, different sizes, uh, a lot of different colors and patterns. If you saw the whole office progress tour, then you saw we have a kind of multicolored set for the sitting area in our office. So um, the main reason we went with this is because it didn't come out of our budget since they were already getting some, but uh, we just got a pretty neutral kind of darker gray that'll hopefully hide some stains and stuff like that if anyone drops a drink. We just went about lining it up, trying to figure out where we want it, uh, it to go. We had to measure the room and get an approximate um, surface area we needed to cover and then kind of figure out where we wanted it to start and end. The room's an odd shape, it's not exactly square, so we couldn't really cover the whole thing without having to cut, uh, without having to cut it up, which we w didn't want to do. So, pretty straightforward, just setting them down. Um, we went with kind of an alternating pattern where you rotate every other square 90 degrees, so it gives you this cool little like crosshatch pattern when you're done. Um, it's not like padded very much, it's kind of just rubber stuff on the um, back side so it doesn't offer much in terms of padding so you probably don't want to sit on it for extended periods of time but we have seats and beanbag chairs so we weren't really worried about that but went pretty fast got that done pretty quick and we're very happy with the way it looks so we also went ahead and picked out a mural for an accent wall that will go behind the tv Kind of just wanted to break up the solid colors of the walls and uh, it just made the room seem like it was a little bit bigger and there was more to it. So this stuff basically works like wallpaper. They send you the roll up squares and you have to put them on in the right order. Then you mix an adhesive in a bucket with water. Um, you let that mix together and sit for a while and then you basically roll that onto the uh, paper and it actually goes through the paper and sticks it to the wall. You don't put it on the wall first. Kind of hard to work with, kind of a little frustrating, um, especially since we had some kind of interesting things we had to work with. But it was a, uh, you know, a little bit big, and we cut it down to size, and it turned out pretty good. Um, there's some, if you look up close, there are some slight faults where the wallpaper started to stretch after we put the adhesive on. And again, we're pretty happy with the result. It's kind of funny. Um, we planned out a lot of the stuff we wanted to do you know, months in advance when we were first um, figuring out where everything would go and getting our budget. And it's kind of cool just seeing it come into fruition now. Next up, we had to mount the TV back. Uh, we cut out a hole for the TV mount. And then we had to mount the sound bar, which was another little bit of a challenge. Things went a little awry there. If you watch the shelving video I did on the custom IKEA lock shelves, you know we don't have wooden studs in these walls. We have metal studs. So we have to use drywall anchors in order to mount heavy things. The heavy duty drywall anchors that we got require pretty large holes to get drilled in the drywall so that they can go through and kind of hold onto the drywall from the back. And the tolerances for the hanging mounts on the sound bar are actually pretty small. So when we drilled those large holes, the anchors were maybe I don't know, like an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch off. And the sound bar actually didn't want to sit perfectly in both of the kind of like teardrop shaped um, little drop things. So we had to kind of finagle that around and get it so that one would go in and try to get the other one in. Um, not optimal, but it's sturdy. It, it'll stay up there and it looks pretty level overall. So we're happy with it. Don't want to have to remount it or anything like that. So we picked up a cable cover or channel, whatever you want to call it, to kind of hide the cables, make it look a little nicer. The inset up top behind the TV actually has a hole, so I would have preferred putting a hole in the bottom as well to pass the cable through and just doing like a little outlet uh, box in order to pass it through, but we weren't really allowed to do that, so this will do for now, and I think it looks okay. I've thought about taking some of the excess wallpaper and wrapping the cable cover in that. It wouldn't line up perfectly, but it might kind of blend in a little bit better. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. So here are the finished shelves with the consoles on them. 
kind of like a little museum of uh, game consoles. I went ahead and spackled the countersunk screw holes and painted the front of the whole thing. The next step will be actually LED lighting every individual shelf in the whole entertainment system and I will save that for the next video.